then maybe that TV who wins that measurement will hit 2000 nits, everything else is crushed black. This is why synthetic measurements doesn't matter. <laughs> Stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on peak luminance, peak brightness, synthetic measurements? Because you think it's relevant to your TV buying decision? It's not. Synthetic measurements do have a purpose and useful for quality control engineers, technicians, and so forth. But in today's video, I'm going to explain why for us, the buying public, the 1% window, 2% window, these squares, these peak luminous measures using synthetic patterns, just not useful and actually misleads us into thinking one TV is actually better than the other when it's not relevant to that determination at all. And we're also going to explain ABL, ASBL, TPC within this context and <laughs> those terms are also confusing as well. We're gonna address that too. So let's get into why it's so useless to talk about peak luminance measurements. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, WhoKeys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build. You have the best of the best, and sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu at the bottom, select Update and Security. Select Activation, then select Change Product Key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click Next, click Activate, and you're done. You can download the Windows 10 Pro key, and you're up and running. But that's not all, folks. WhoKeys has keys for games, too. Steam, Origin, you play, you name it, you got it. Check out their sites. There are discounts for all sorts of stuff. And most importantly, you want to be productive? What about Office Suite? Yep, you can download a copy of Office Professional with my code SF20 at checkout and bam. ABL, ASBL, TPC, all these things affect brightness. And before jumping into the review, let's talk about measurements. Many of you have asked me, hey, when are you gonna start putting out measurements again? And let me talk about measurements for a second. So I've been using this. This is the Konica Minolta LS100. And they don't make it like this anymore. It's made in Japan. If you go on eBay, a lightly used one, easily over $1,500. It's amazing. And I think it's no longer relevant to TV reviews. Generally speaking, I don't believe measurements are relevant anymore. It's more important to compare the TVs side by side and get a relative reference point with a calibrated TV or some other TV that you can relate to, and this is why. This goes to measurements in general and how ABL, ASBL, TPC, how it affects measurements as well as tone mapping algorithms. So I'm gonna take a quick minute to explain why measurements are going to be pointless or have been pointless in the past because I don't see it having any bearing on real world content. After reviewing TVs for many years now, looking at measurements and then seeing what I'm seeing in real content, it's like there's no predictability. If you rank all the TVs based on brightness measurements, but then rank them based on image quality performance or HDR impact, they don't necessarily match up. So let's just talk about what these, this means. First, the terms. We're gonna start with ABL, which I hate the term, by the way. Automatic Brightness Limiter. Much confusion as to what this means. I'm going to call it now Brightness Load Balancing, BLB. When I say Brightness Load Balancing, I'm actually referring to what was formerly called ABL, Automatic Brightness Limiter. This doesn't tell me much, right? As a matter of fact, it's misunderstood as you're watching content, it's bright, and then suddenly it starts to dim. That's not ABL necessarily. Well, it's not ABL at all. That dimming effect is a different algorithm. It is a dimming to protect control system, DTP. We'll get into that. So dimming to protect is a type of brightness limiter, but because brightness limiter doesn't tell you much, 
Dimming to protect tells you a lot more. It's dimming to protect the panel, and that happens over time, and you can see it happening. When you see the brightness starting to dim, dimming, that is a dimming to protect system. Why? It's to protect the panel. That's another thing. We're gonna start with brightness load balancing, which happens the minute the image hits the screen. What do I mean by brightness load balancing? So, in your TV, your panel, the whole system, there are three components that affects brightness. Not just maximum brightness, but the whole TV, how it approaches brightness in scenes, in testing. Synthetic measurements, which is what you guys have been asking for, is pointless for this reason. Brightness load balancing is affected by the power availability of the TV, the power board, the PSU, anything that's related to generating power. Okay, this is limited. Not all TVs are created the same. Forget the panel technology. There are not all provided with the same power supply. Some TVs have a lot of power. Some people, some TV, some people, <laughs> yeah, some people don't have a lot of power. Some TVs don't have enough power. Regardless, each TV model has a specific power supply system that's limited. It's not unending, right? Next is the actual panel technology itself. The panel also has a limit to its brightness. It's a physical limit and it's a durability limit too. So for example, OLED, what we're talking about today, if I push an OLED TV to 5,000 nits, it may happen, but then your TV will last two days, <laughs> if that, right? So just because a TV can hit a certain brightness, it shouldn't because durability is important. We want our TVs to last more than a few years. And so this also affects brightness load balancing. And third is the tone mapping system. This is what the TV designer wants you to see. It's their creative intent. This is the TV's creative intent because that creative intent is limited by both the power available to the TV and the technology. So this tone mapping system has to take these two into account with the source. Let's say the source, Spears and Munsell, wants you to show 10,000 nits. Well, the panel cannot produce 10,000 nits and the power supply cannot provide enough energy to power 10,000 nits. So the software tone mapping system has to take these two physical limitations into account while also respecting the desires of the source, 10,000 nits. It will then decide which part of the scene to make bright, which part of the scene to make dim, and each TV does that differently, whether it's Samsung, LG, or Sony. It doesn't matter if it's Dolby Vision or HDR10 or 10 Plus. The TV model with its individual software or firmware makes that decision differently based on these two. All three taken together, the tone mapping algorithm, the software, right? The panel limitations, durability, all of that, and the actual power supply, power board system, this together is brightness load balancing. Between these three, the TV has to decide how to load balance the energy, the panel's durability, and the software. Now, brightness load balancing means once an image signal is received, the TV has this signal. It has to decide, okay, so synthetic measurement, 1% window. Oh, this is easy. On a 1% window, everything else is black. Okay, that's easy to decide. The entire screen is turned off, except for that 1% window. I could put all my power into that 1% window. Yes, I will win that measurement contest. Or will I? Remember, you still have power supply limitation panel limitation. The software is taken out of the equation because the software is like, yes, I don't have to worry about anything else. 100% max luminance into a 1% window. But the power supply, can it handle <laughs> the energy requirement? It's asking for 10,000 nits. Can it put out 10,000 nits in a 1% window? You may say yes, but can it? And number two, should it? Even if the PSU or the power board can handle 10,000 nits on a 1% window, can the panel handle that amount of brightness? And for how long? Remember, durability is a function of heat over time. If you're putting out 10,000 nits on a 1% window over half a second, over one second, three seconds, five seconds, what does that do to the lifetime of your panel? So these are two physical limitations that also affect the synthetic measurements, but it's artificial because it's a bright white light. Unless you're watching content that's limited to bright white light, putting out 100% power to the panel 
tells you exactly one thing. Well, when everything is black in a 1% window, I can get, let's say, 2,000 nits. Should you decide to buy a TV based on that one measurement? Because let's say this TV has 2,000 nits on a 1% window. This TV only has 1,500 nits. Oh, clearly this is the brighter TV, or is it? On a 1% window, if it hits that window for a half a second, right? What does it matter? So then we haven't had content. This is just a, a, a white box window, right? In real content, now the TV has to decide, hmm, I have a lot of other content around me. Maybe my 1% bright point will be down to 60% of that maximum brightness, and it'll still look great if I lower the brightness of the rest of the content. And this TV says, no, 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 I want to hit 1,000 nits, because I'm capable of 1,000 nits, and the rest of the content will be completely dark. I'm going to make it black crushed, right? And so you have a TV that shows all the details, but it's not quite as bright in that specular highlight as this TV. This TV, that one point is super bright, beating this TV, but everything else is really dark. That 1% measurement, synthetic measurement, doesn't help you because all it says to you is, great, I'm gonna get 1% window and everything else is crushed black, which essentially is what a synthetic measurement does. Little white box, everything is black. Is that what you want to see from your content? If you do, then maybe that TV who wins that measurement will hit 2,000 nits, everything else is crushed black. This is why synthetic measurements doesn't matter. But now let's get into DTP, dimming to protect. You put a bright image and then it starts to dim over time. There are two ways to do this. You hit maximum brightness and then it dims quick, or you hit 80% brightness, but it takes longer to dim over time, almost imperceptible. This TV with aggressive dimming to protect, DTP, otherwise known as ASBL, TPC, but those don't make sense to me. Dimming to protect actually does make sense to me. Auto static brightness limiter. Static, what's static? Is the image static? Is the automation static? Not very conclusive as far as what that means. And TPC, temporal peak luminance control, at least the word temporal tells me it's happening over time, but the word dim tells me it's happening over time, or dimming, right? It's an active voice. Dimming to protect, it tells me why they're doing it. It's to protect the TV. Well, this TV chooses to hit max brightness for maybe one or two seconds and then immediately drop down. So it will win the sustained brightness war because maybe max brightness for two seconds is all you need, HDR explosion. But this TV is thinking, no, I want the experience to be more consistent, less jarring. I'm going to hit 80% of my maximum power brightness, but dim slower over time. Because both are OLED TVs, both have to have some sort of dimming to protect system in place to protect it. The question is, which approach? That depends on your use case. If you're watching sports, where you watch bright scenes for hours on end, a hockey playoff, right? Maybe this one where it hits 80% brightness but barely dims over time is the TV for you. But then if you're watching HDR impactful movies, we have boom, bang, shang for one second. This one hits it for one second, 100%, but then quickly dims. But it's okay because in the next scene, it's dimmer anyway. So you don't notice the dimming to protect system in effect. See, use cases, and this is why measurements do not help. Even if I were to measure, oh, guess what? This TV does this, this TV does this. A firmware update may change all of that as well because this TV may realize, ooh, you know what? This guy's selling more TVs with the DTP set to one second blast. In the next firmware, we're gonna do that, right? So what's the point? It's always best to be content specific. Rant off.